So this is the third of three videos that I'm doing on how to do some spatial data applications in R. I'm using uh, the case of Milwaukee robberies in 2014 to show how to integrate point and polygon data. We've made some chloroplast maps. We've also made some uh, measures of robbery density or robberies per unit of land area in each of the 661 block groups in Milwaukee in the year 2014. And that's kind of going to be our starting point. So here we're going to do some higher level spatial stuff, including making a weight matrix. Then we're going to calculate spatial correlation or Moran's eye. We're going to do the Geddes Ord hotspot maps, where you can look at where clusters of high and low values are uh, found together. And then a, finally, a simple spatial regression model. All right, so this builds on the first two of the files that I included. I'm just sort of run them. The second one runs the first one, and then here I'm going to run the second one. And so it kind of telescopes here. But one weird thing is that in between making the videos, it, somehow my drive is now I. So I changed mine to I, but I had to do it with my other files too. If that didn't happen to you, if you had the same file drive name that you've always had, you don't have to do any changes. Or if it's D instead of F, but it's been that way for a while, um, you might have to do some changes. But that's just something here. And I already ran it to save time. You can see here's my account of variables data. I've got the breaks I've made in previous ones. But you can run this to give you, um, you know, the, all the stuff you need to keep going. Finally, make sure you set the working directory to whatever yours is. Or if you have a subfolder, make sure you add that too. So first, we're going to make a weights matrix. Um, generally speaking, simple weight matrices are recommended. Sometimes people do things like inverse distances. But then for 661, Objects, you'd have a matrix that, that was 661 squared, and every block group would have a value associated to every other one, which is a huge matrix. It takes time to calculate. Chicago has 3,000 block groups. That would uh, actually, if it gets large enough in the Chicagoland area, you can't even calculate it because the matrix is like a million units. So, um, the, generally speaking, you want a lot of ones and zeros, and you can normalize it to make averages. But generally speaking, you're going to have a lot of zeros. And so I'm going to use a contiguity matrix, queen contiguity of order one, which means any block group that touches the block group in question, even if it's just one point, um, that gets one, and everything else is zero. So it's a lot simpler to calculate. Um, the opposite of queen is like chess, literally like chess. Uh, the rook's case is only like lengthwise in the square. Um, the corners don't count, but it's kind of like the movement of the chess pieces. If, if a queen can move diagonally, diagonal pieces count. And the rook's case is only the, the uh, sides and up and down. So queen can, allows for points to touch. But generally speaking, both um, have a lot of zero weights. Um, higher orders would mean that if you're two spaces away or two block groups away, that you would get some sort of a value. But a queen one means only the adjacent touching block groups count as neighbors. All right, that's that's uh, a simpler matrix that it's recommended in the literature. So we're going to use the SP depth uh, one. So I just want to make sure I have it. I'm going to make sure I have the library, and I'm going to load it. And here I have it. And so I'm going to make Q1, which I call my matrix, which is short for queen one, polygon to neighbor, poly to NB, my data, which I've been working with, and queen true means make it queen's case. Right? So first I do that. You want to take a look at what you have. It tells you some information about it. Uh, but then I'm going to take neighbor to list wise. And what that means, it's gonna. This is gonna be the one we're gonna work with. We're gonna take the neighbors and turn them to listwise. Take queen one, and style is W, all right, which means weighted. So if you have eight neighbors around you, each one will will not be one anymore. It would actually be 0.125, it would be one eighth. So this is row normalized, all rows sum to one, right? And then zero policy is true, all right. So now we have Q1. I don't know if it looks any different. We really don't do too much with these, but it kind of shows us more information about it. All right, and so we're Q1 is our new weight matrix, and that's kind of the code you need to get it. So we have Q1, which is our weight matrix. And now we're going to do Moran's I. And I'm assuming you're familiar with these tests or you're learning these tests. I'm not going to really teach the theory behind it, but it's spatial correlation. The high values mean highly correlation. But it's each each value over like the lagged block groups. And so Instead of like x correlated with y, it's like x correlated with lagged x. And in time series, lags might mean last year or last month. Here, it's one spatial unit away. So spatial lags have to do with being removed by distance rather than time. So Moran.test RDQ1 gives us 0.22, which isn't super high, right? But it looks like it's significance, right? And it actually has a p-value close to zero. Actually, mathematically, this would be zero. So it's small, but it's significant. So robbery has small but significant spatial autocorrelation. What that means is that 
uh, an expert, a good predictor of robbery in an area is robbery in a nearby area, that there are spatial patterns, right? You can also do a Moran plot, which kind of, I didn't really change too much with this, but this is how it's shown in, uh, in R. Some of these dots are given more importance and they're, they're tagged, but this is, this is the line, right? And here are all the points around. It doesn't really look like a super strong pattern, but it is small but significant. Significant. So second, we're going to do Geddes Ord hot spots, right? So what that is is it can show clusters of high or low values. So we're going to make a variable called data in the data slot. It's going to be called gstat, and it did not exist before we're making it. And the command is local g, and it's got the variable and the weights matrix. Remember, R D is the robbery density matrix that we made before, right? And so gstat is going to be here. All right, we're gonna, and so this this lowercase is a little different than the higher the uppercase, but we're making a separate variable outside of what's in the data. So we're making it twice. We're making it in the data, and then we're separating it out. And then we're going to look at the variable here. You can see that it's it's basically like a, a t statistic, right? So it's got ranges above or below zero. It can be higher or lower. And we're going to use a z z score a significant levels too. All right, so here are our variables, and so we have which ones are significantly negative and positive. Right, so we're going to set our breaks, right, we're going to make breaks G, and I call it G for Geddes Ord, at the standard significance levels. Now we have four breaks for five groups. So anything greater than, say, 1.96 is significantly positive. Anything in between is, is between 5 and 10 percent. Anything between is insignificant. This is negative at, at 5 to 10 percent, and then the lowest numbers are significantly negative. So that's just standard statistics. The colors, blue, cyan, which is light blue, white, reddish and red, right? And that's going to make it look like something you might see in ArcGIS, where blue is cold and red is hot. Right? So we're making the breaks, or we're making the colors. Right? And so these are officially accepted color names. They're in quotes, and they're separated by commas. All right, so now we're going to make a choropleth map as before. So we use the choropleth command again. SP is data as before. New variable, which is gstat, which we made. We're going to shade with our new breaks and our new colors. And we're going to give it robbery, hot, cold spots in Milwaukee under Maine. Then we're going to add the city line by superimposing it. And finally, we're going to add a legend on the left, given a title, get us or G statistic, with the legend that was what I explained before, the five groups, significantly negative, at 5 and 10 percent, insignificant, and then positive at 5 and 10 percent. And we're going to fill it, finally, with those colors. So do it here. And we have our hot and cold spot map. If we zoom in, it's kind of like what I've been talking about with the point data. Near north side, near south side are hot spots, as well as the east side. This is a statistical kind of proof of the pattern that I was talking about, that this hot spot over here is not a poor area, relatively speaking, but it's got a hot spot of robberies, and that might be important for, some, for somebody in law enforcement to know. Got cold spots over here that might want to be explained, as well as in the suburbs over by Glendale and stuff as well as the far north side by brown deer. So he, you might want to talk about what causes these hotspots or how they look economically, but those clusters of points are shown in the data with this test. Now don't worry about this. This is off-center, but when we print it to file, it's going to be fine. Um, but our legend is over here. So that is the choropleth map. We'll print it last. But finally, we're going to do spatial lag regression. This is a bivariate regression. We're not really going to do, have much to say about what it means because, generally speaking, in econometrics, a bivariate regression is, is useless in terms of prediction. Right? But we're going to have two and then finally three variables. So we're going to do robbery density regressed on deprivation, and we're going to include spatial weights. So we're including lagged variables as part of our model. So I call it reg1, right? Um, and the command that we have here is lag SARLM, right? And then it's L it's so it's not the LM linear model, it's lagged with an autoregressive or a, you know lag model. And then the the Y variable is robbery density and then the single X variable is this deprivation and we're going to see whether there's a statistical relationship between robberies and deprivation. Our data are here. It's a coincidence that they're both named data but the data that we're drawing from is this data that we've been working with. And then list LSTW is the list weights. And then it is Q1. So it says, what's our model? What data are we using? And then finally, what weights are we using? All right. Now in here, I put, you could write it the long way, which I used to do. And so this just lays out X. 
this lays out excuse me this lays out y this lays out x but you can you can drop all of this if you say whatever we just did that's called data so it's two ways of doing it the long way and the short way but we make reg one as an object and then we have to call it i'm going to summarize those results and if you know how the regression residuals work here's the intercept and here's the slope they're both very small but they are both significant. This is close to zero, and remember, this has got 16 zeros in front of it. It's, it's basically the computer's version of zero. Rho is the spatial autocorrelation term, so there is spatial correlation, etc. So there is some small relationship between uh, deprivation and the density of crime in Milwaukee. Now, I didn't include all the data that I've used in my models, but you could really add some more data and make a better model. So I'm going to see what we have. I'm going to look at the column names. We could say, well, I deliberately left the vacancy rate in. You could do median y if you turned it to a number, um, and we're going to do that. So we got columns six, seven, eight is vacancy rate, nine is median y. All right. So because we've already seen the median y comes through as a string, I'm going to convert it to numeric. All right, and I'm going to look at the correlations between seven deprivation. So 7, 8, 9, and 10. What are the correlations between robberies and um, robberies and the underlying socioeconomics of it? So I'm going to look at the correlation here, and I'm going to run it. And you can see that deprivation is tied to the vacancy rate positively, and it's very negatively correlated with the median income. Right? And you'd expect that, right? High income areas are low deprivation. But robbery count is not really tied to any. Now, if I wanted to, I could. I'm going to look at not just um, not just uh, 7 through 10, but I'm going to look at 7, 8, 9, and then 11, 12. So I want 7, 9, so 7 colon 9 is everything from 7 to 9, and 12. All right. So I'm going to look at this. Actually, I got, that's a mistake here. I've got to do that. And as I close it up, 7 through 9, comma 12. Make sure everything lines up. Remember, if I run these errors here, I, these these will tell me I have a problem. And, oops, now I got it. All right, run this. Oops, and I need one more. All right, and here we have it. So I changed out robbery count to robbery density. Right now, notice here that as I do this, it's telling me that these errors are in here, um, and so I so it's going to tell me all the problems I'm going to have as I go. All right, now, hopefully these will disappear. And adding this, right, it tells me I had an error, and it goes away. So remember, when you're doing stuff in R, you're going to run across with errors that you have to fix. It's OK to Google your error, run through stuff through Stack Exchange. It's OK to see stuff. But once you fix it, it's fixed for good, right? You save it, you come back, and you don't have to worry about it again. So all I did was I switched out robbery count with robbery density. And it's a little bit better, right? Deprivation is. Remember, a small correlation with the density of robberies. Income has about the same thing, only negative. All right, and so using robbery density is a little bit more explanatory than robbery count. Right, so that's one change I made. Right, and so another way to do it before I move on is seven, eight, nine, twelve. Right, and so that's going to give you the same answer. Right, all in a row. Okay, so that's what I did with the correlation. I, I had originally robbery count, and I changed it to robbery density. And so finally, I'm going to have a second regression called reg2, where I have an extra variable added into my model. I'm going to add the vacancy rate. I'm going to see if that, too, is significant. Right? And so this is a three-variable regression. Right? And as you have it here, you see that vacancies is actually not significant, but the other two are. So adding the vacancy rate did not add anything to our model. Right? So that's what we did. So we've got spatial, we made a weight matrix first, but then we did a spatial uh, autocorrelation. We did a hotspot, and then we finally did a regression. Finally, I'm just going to do a high res hotspot map. I'm going to call it MKE underscore Rob underscore G, JPJ. It's in the same I drive that I'm using. It's going to be 9 by 9 inches with 300 TPI, and it's the core plot we've been doing. It's for pulls from data, the variable is gstat that we made. It's got the new breaks, right, which is the significance levels, the colors, which are from blue to red, and it's got the name that we had. Then we're going to add the city line and this legend. We do this, and remember, it's going to appear in our drive. So when we look at it, you've got this map that we made before.
right and so here our label shows up pretty nicely over here so most areas are insignificant but we have some cold spots and we have our hot spots over here and then of course th there'd be more statistics you'd want to do to look into what that is so that's the third of our three videos where we started with just simply plotting different types of shapefile and then finally we moved on to uh, you know, making some new variables and normalizing things, and, and by the end, we did some statistical tests. So we did the, the Moran's I, the Geddes or G, and finally a simple spatial lag regression model. So hopefully you'll be able to do some more, be able to uh, apply these to whatever project you are looking at.